Hello and welcome to uh, the Lived Quality podcast and we're having another Lived Quality conversation today uh, with my friend Juana who I'm very excited to see again. We have great conversations with Juana um, and so welcome Juana. Uh, how are you doing today? Yeah, thanks so much. I'm well. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been great talking to you over the last few days you know we spoke about work last time and a few other things we have these great conversations i really really enjoy them um and that's what you know this whole channel podcast is all is all about uh so maybe just to start us off i'm i'm just curious like what is you know what have you been up to of late uh what's on your mind what would you like to talk about today yeah, so we did talk about a couple of weeks ago the concept of work and we explored that quite well. And then in a more recent time, we actually explored the, the concept of friendship and we talked about how people come into our lives and go. And that was really exciting. That was really cool. And I loved how that conversation went, which was unexpected. Um, but of late, I've really been concerned with thinking about what it is that gives us all purpose and thinking on what is it that I, I suppose maybe it's because I'm at a crossroad again. Uh, I feel like I've had a few crossroads uh, recently, you know, over the past, let's say, eight years. Um, but I really feel this crossroad where I've just gained so much content, right? I've been doing these courses. I've been undertaking a lot of personal um, development and been engaged with counselors and, and all these, you know, coaches and trying to really grow myself and, uh, just wanting to go to the next level and wanting to identify what is it that I'm here to do mm. and really being clear on my vision and my purpose. And so with that, I've been contemplating lately of what does that look like in terms of me putting things out there or making my, myself available to serve. What does it look like? And so I've been um, looking into different organizations that perhaps could give me the tools of that. And one of the organizations I've been um, sort of looking at, and we had a few calls, has been really great. Um, but then there was this monetary factor I had to consider of like, there's a lot of money involved for them to engage with me and to help me start up what it is that I have a vision for. Um, and so I was going back and forth and crunching the numbers and trying to work out like, what's it going to look like? And I guess I'm just really stuck at this, like, I had this saying going off in my head. It's like, where, where God guides, he provides. And so I'm sort of like, is it something within me that's preventing that provision? Or is there something that perhaps I could be considering, or is this really another like is this a great opportunity for me to embark on um and mm. so you know i could make the finances happen um i just have to be really thinking outside the box but just i don't know i have this complexity with you want to see a vision um in motion or you want to see it come alive and then there seems to be these obstacles and in particular the biggest one i find is is when it comes to finances like paying yourself through a course or paying yourself through schooling so that you can have a better job. And it's like, how do we, I don't know, for myself, it's like, why does it feel like it's so hard? Because I, I'm at the point where I just want to give. And we explored that a little bit in our earlier conversations, just wanting to give of what I already have and wanting to be present and to serve the people that are in front of me. Um, and perhaps it's something in, you know, in terms of the angle that I'm taking or looking at it, maybe there's something that, that I haven't explored. I don't know. It's just, I made that frustration. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing that frustration and um, I would say as well, like I'm probably going through something similar, especially, you know, trying to do something new. Um, uh, you've spoken a few things there about like purpose and, um, you know, a vision. And then there's these obstacles uh, like when I put all those together, like what's coming up for me is um, like I'm hearing like struggle, right? Like there's uh, is this struggle and uh, 
sort of like uh, a need to overcome um, and, and progress. Um, it's as if you're being drawn out by this uh, purpose, which is drawing you towards where exactly you want to go. Like, it makes sense. You should get there. Um, but then it's sort of like an uphill climb and there's, there's these obstacles and there's these challenges. There's these things sort of you have to drag along on the way to achieve that purpose. Um, yeah, and that deeply resonates with me. Like it deeply resonates with me because I think partly like it, it, for me, that when I think about it, it has to be it has to be struggleful in a way that um, it brings out, uh, you know, a better version. I don't know if it's better, but like it's, I don't have a better word for that, but it's, it's like it brings out something else in you. Like it draws you out of what is comfortable for you because what is comfortable is where you're at. And Staying where I am at seems okay, and this is fine. But if I just stay here, then I can't go to what I'm being drawn to. You know, I can't, I can't, I can't get to that purpose. And for me to start going there, there's things that I need, like there's more strength that I need to sort of like manifest. And I think we all have the potential for that. And it's um. We have the ability to sort of do the work to manifest it, um, but on the other hand, it's also a challenge. Like it's a deep, strong challenge. It's daunting, um, and it's scary. Like it is scary. Like, like, like you know, here you discuss that. It, it's, it's, yeah, it's a challenge, and it is a scary challenge. However, I feel that with every milestone we reach towards that purpose, like the closer we get, um, the, the stronger we become, the stronger we become. Uh, and I, I would like to borrow an example. I was watching the, uh, it's, I think, I don't know if it's a docu-series, like an educational uh, show about, uh, you know, Greek history, and they were showing um, this story about Alexander. It's it's recently been put on Netflix, um, and you know he he starts out as you know someone young and he's wayward, just going about the village and you know hanging out with his friends, taking his sweet time, and he's fallen out with his father because partly of this, like he's a rowdy young fella who is just doing whatever he wants, you know, youthfulness. And he goes back to visit his father, like his father asks to see him and he goes back. And when he goes back to see him, uh, the father gets killed. And then all of a sudden, he's thrown into this weird situation that, oh, he has to take over for him because he's the successor. Now he has to become a king. And and he doesn't, he, he's, he didn't plan this, right? <laughs> like he just happened to be there and this happened. And now he has to respond to it. Uh, of course, he, he does the best that he can. Uh, but surprisingly, like in all his journey, you know, his country is at war with uh, the Persians. And, and he, now he has to go to war. Like they're losing the battle. He has to go and do something about that. And he goes there and tries his own method, which is a bit strange. Like all the generals disagree. He, they, they, there's this moment when they go to war with the Persians. And normally, like in tradition at that time, when you're going to war, you sort of like arrive uh, at the battlefield, have a rest, like relax. Your 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 enemies are on the other side uh, of the battlefield. They also have a, a rest. It's kind of like you showed up for battle. It's going to happen tomorrow. So you spend today partying and relaxing. Then tomorrow, early morning, you're going to wake up and go to battle and then kill each other. And whoever wins, wins, right? Um, but when they arrive there, his army is tired from the long trek. And he tells his generals, uh, look, the, it seems our enemies are going to be they are outnumbering us. So 
we need to do something about that. How about we surprise them by attacking now instead of waiting for tomorrow? And the generals disagree. Like, no, the men are tired. You know, it's, it's not going to be successful. And he says, look, I'm king and that's my call. Let's let's do it. Like, let's get our weapons. Let's go attack them and see what happens because I don't think they expect it. And because of that element of surprise, we made, we made win, right? Like, in, in essence, like, there's no way in, in, they were expected to win, but because of this element of surprise, maybe they could stand a chance. And they do it, and they actually win. And the generals still disagree with his method, <laughs> but they say, look, it, it delivers results. And so they, they're still skeptical, but he makes progress. And with every battle... He made progress, like every battle he won, he was encouraged to go do more. However, he had this weird, peculiar thing he was obsessed with, uh, with all the, 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 you'd say, the ancient stories, the myths at the time. So with every area, that when they were, were doing the battle, he would first go visit like a shrine, visit a temple, go find out about the, the little monument in the area to try and learn about the land uh he's always fascinated by this and he would always do that and if there's something greek in the area like something of greek descent he would want to pay a visit and honor that and this was another thing that was frustrating his generals because it seemed like he was unfocused like he wasn't you know focusing on the mission which was to go to war and win uh, but he was doing it in his own way, and, and he would always tell them, look, this is, um, I don't understand why I have to do this right now, but I just feel like it is the right thing to do. And look, we get back to war. We've won something. Let's have a rest, and we'll do it again. Uh, right now, I need to do this. Um, but with every, with every, you'd say, uh, battle he won, he would make progress. Like every little milestone. You take time, enjoy it, and then re- refocus and then try something different. Try something different. And so from wh- why I'm bringing that up is because it seems to me like that journey is very similar to the, the ascent, you know, to purpose. Like when, you, when you're trying to raise up to, you know, to your purpose. Uh, so there is difficulties involved and there is challenges to overcome. However, I think all that's part of the story, like part of the journey. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I'll give it back to you. What do you think about that? Yeah, I appreciate that. And I was thinking as you were telling the story, I was like, oh, I can resonate with a lot of that because there's sometimes times in my life where I felt led in a certain direction or led to do something and it didn't make sense. And it seemed like there was a focus shift, but all in all, I think when I look back, it brings you to um, the main purpose. And you realize that later, like in retrospect, you look back and you think, oh, there was a purpose in that as well. There was something I gained or knowledge that I acquired, or there was an experience that needed to be had. And so I really appreciate, I really appreciate that. And I think it is always this uh, tension of, you know, I think too often we want to step we want to be unique, but we also want to step in a track that's already been laid, right? Because that would just make it so much easier for us to walk. But when we can step out and be um, on a track that's never been laid and we become more aware of that vision that's leading us and allow the vision, um, you know, sometimes we may see with our eyes, sometimes we may just feel it, sometimes we may just experience it in our body. But allowing that to lead us, it will take us to uncharted territory. Um, and that's where unique strengths really come in. And so this, I was, the call I was on this morning with that lady talking about how to brand, you know, how to find your brand and how to brand yourself successfully. And she mentioned um, something about, there was something in the materials actually that mentioned that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that do what you want to do. There's already for every single job and every single career, there's already people out there that are doing what you want to do. So to stand apart and to be different and unique, you've got to really lean into that uniqueness and not expect that people have, a, you know, every single step laid out for you in terms of branding yourself and that it's going to be just, you know, this 
crystal clear clarity on every single detail about it or that even as you're working through what does my vision look like what does it look like to serve other people what does my calling look like in actual practice just allow yourself I suppose and and I feel like I'm having a pep talk with myself to just allow myself to be more uh, flexible and more leaning into that vision rather than expecting the answers to come from somewhere else but really tuning in to understand the difference and the uniqueness that I bring because that ultimately is what will sell the brand and what will sell you um, and, and the vision that people will want to be a part of. Um, because when there's someone else and there's lots of people out there that already do what you want to do, then you've got to find that thing that sets you apart. And I really appreciate that, you know, once that young ruler took over from his father, he wasn't there. Um, and while I think that in the story it highlights his um, desire to really continue the legacy that the father left, it also shows that he was really in tune with what he could bring, what he could contribute, what was his unique gifting and where was the calling now taking him. Um, and so I really appreciate that. And I think it's it's about, you know, the perspective we have around allowing ourselves to be open-minded, to be fully present with that which is calling to us because we all have a purpose. We all have a reason for being and how we serve others will look differently to each one of us. And I was also reflecting on like my worship team at the moment, we're going through a transition and the leaders that are leaving um, are sort of saying like, well, you know, we'll hand over to you guys and you guys can take over and you can, you know, do whatever. And so we're putting together a team to try and um, support that transition. But one thing that I just couldn't get past was that while we're saying we'll allow you to take over and we'll, sort of hand it over and teach you everything you need to know, it's still very much a them kind of doing, right? A them kind of work. It's like we know that their strength is to lead, their strength is to sort of do it all. Like they're very gifted. They can just about step into any uh, part of the what the creative should look like, right? Or your worship team should look like in terms of what it needs to bring on a Sunday and the things that are required for that, like your lights and sound and all of that. And they can, you know, it, it's a couple and they can do it. They, they've done it for so long. But it's always been a them thing. And I think it's really made me, I've reflected so much over the past week where I'm like, okay, well, how do we take over when the person who's been in charge hasn't, been able to allow others to take over like mm. just reflecting on the principles of you've got to empower people and teach them what you're doing rather than waiting for them to somehow just once I leave they're just going to work it out well they're not going to work it out and if we just say we're going to hand it over if we just say we're going to show them how to do it but don't actually do it as soon as possible then we don't have a lasting legacy and so I think I felt that that aspect is necessary there. And I think in some ways that young ruler perhaps viewed or saw how his father was doing things and was able to then carry on a legacy. And a legacy really is tied into your values and beliefs. Um, it doesn't necessarily tie into, I have to do it this way, you know, because visions can look or can be carried out in different ways, right? And so, yeah, I'm just reflecting on all of that and, and sensing like this, there's certainly an open mind that we need to carry and unwillingness to allow the vision, you know, in whatever direction you wish to take us. But it's scary. And I think my frustration often is that I don't always know what the next step is, right? I don't know. I don't know which way to go. I don't know if maybe I was meant to somehow come up with all that money and, and do that thing. And, it, you know, they were going to really help me and send me on a great path and I think that's great and I think they have the potential but I'm just like okay how do we manifest you talked about manifesting how do we manifest um because it's what been one of the frustrating things in my life where I hear about people manifesting their dream life or hear about them manifesting their vision and you know relying on whatever it is that they believe but at the same time I'm like okay I rely on God I I envision my future I meditate I do all the things but then how, how do you leap from here to there? Like, how do, how do I leap? Because it seems mm. like every time I want to leap, oh, there's another course that people are yeah. giving me. Or there's, a, oh, there's this company. You just pay a lot of money and they'll help you 
set up and there's just always seems to be another thing and another thing and it's just and I and I expressed to the lady this morning that I just feel contentful and I feel exhausted just even thinking about another thing to sign up to like another mailbox or check out these resources and knowing myself I want to do it all but I've also reached that point where I'm like it's exhausting mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm a you know you can sort of do everything but not do anything well yeah yeah, no, I hear you, and 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 I I exactly feel that. And some of the things, uh, you know, some of the things I'm picking up from what you've shared is like, you know, it is exhausting, it is it is tiring, uh, especially when you've been on the journey for some time, right? Um, and sometimes it may even feel daunting, like, you know, am I ever gonna get to some place, right? Like it feels that way sometimes. Um, however, you also touched on something there before, like, you know, these leaders who are handing over things and um, they're not demonstrating. They're working off assumptions. At least that's what I was getting. It's like what needs to happen is sort of like evident. Like if you're going to, and this happens a lot, um, probably I haven't seen it a lot Maybe here in Australia, there's a bit more empathy uh, to young workers or even when you go to start a new job, there's always the assumption that you may not know what you're doing. So you, they try to train you or they try to give you, you know, an idea of what it is. And, and they have low expectations because, you know, they haven't really worked with you before. Uh, however, I've, uh, in, in, you know, when I used to live in Uganda uh, and growing up there there was always this expectation that you should have you should know what to do before you even start the job so if you got a job uh, you expected to know everything before you are trained and so there's this common thing that you find uh, we used to do back home whereby you you would write your resume and you you're pitching yourself as somebody who does everything it's like look whatever it is you need me to do I can do it. Like I'll figure it out as I do it and I'll get you something, which is, I think it's very um, enthusiastic and uh, very open-minded. However, it has its limits as well, whereby you find that you don't, um, like you don't know enough about the thing you're doing. So you can do a little bit of it, um, but probably for you to achieve uh, and uh, you know to to achieve a level of excellence in doing that thing to the point that makes it you know novel like really stand out in a in a different way um, you're going to need to do much more than just a little bit and and so from the other thing you're talking about like you know when you're doing these things you know working towards your legacy it's really about your values and your beliefs that you're trying to um, channel into the thing you're doing. And and for me, when when I hear that, I I think about sort of, and I can't find a really good word, but it's like you have to create a, a new spirit, sort of like a new relationship, and hold a space for it with that which you're doing and in that new thing you create or that new thing you're going to create when you create that relationship there's going to be a piece of your spirit in it which is you know aligned with your values and beliefs in that when you if you apply you'd say yourself to it in a way that is agreeable to yourself uh that will manifest through whatever it is that you're participating in, and but that is um, that is much more difficult to to see and to make sense uh, because it's more like something you have to search for and feel out and you know keep trying. Um, it doesn't. In most cases, uh, we know what it's not rather than what it is. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you, you'll, you'll ask people a lot, you know, about these kind of things. Like, you know, what is 
you know, what, what, what is the thing that you want the most? Uh, they may tell you in the moment, like if, you know, it's, it has to do with hunger or anything. But if you ask them at a scope of like life, what is the thing you want the most in life? They'll tell you everything that it's not. <laughs> like they'll, they'll say, well, I know it's not this. I am very confident it's not that. And I may not be able to pinpoint, but I will tell you what it's not. And similarly, uh, the, the, when you listen to those people who have uh, like really uh, been successful in certain aspects, and you still you, you hear those uh, those interviews, like for the athletes, for example, you know who have uh, excelled in in Olympics and won like a medal, uh, they're so how can I say they're so awestruck. Like they, it's like they didn't expect it to, like it was a surprise for them as well. But from the outside, we're looking at it like they're totally going to get this, right? Like they know that. And in some cases, maybe they know. Uh, but in most cases, when they ask, they'll tell you about the struggles. Like all, all those months training, I had to stay away from my family. And then they start giving thanks to their family. You know, you see... You know, the, the Academy Awards, you know, they, they award someone, you know, uh, an Oscar or something. And they give all the thanks to all the people who facilitated um, the opportunity for them to be able to go do this work, which is sort of sacrificial in a way that has led them to even get this uh, recognition. Even which recognition they, they did not expect and were not prepared to even talk about because they were not expecting it. And so in most cases, it's, it's something we're, we're seeking. It's like we're doing the best that we can to try and get closer to it. Um, mm-hmm. But we, we, we know what it's not. And, and if you remember that, um, that thing we spoke about with uh, Daniel, what, what he coined the apophatic walking stick, it's like the, the apophatic is, is, is knowing knowing what it's not <laughs> it's like it's like you you don't know what it is exactly you just know a range of what it could be uh but you definitely know the the edges of what it's not and so i think um the struggle of trying to figure that out yes i agree it is tiresome it is it is frustrating and it's very challenging. However, at the same time, I think for for us to succeed in that kind of endeavor, it's not a walk in the park, if I may call it that way. It's not going to be something easy. Otherwise, we will not uh, relate to it in a serious way. Like it won't. It w- I don't know if it, it, we can relate to it in such a deep way and, and, and bond with it in, so, in almost a spiritual way if it comes without struggle. I don't know about that. However, I feel like part of the struggle is what makes it, is what creates that strong bonding. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think about that? Yeah, and I really appreciate that because there is value in struggle and we don't see a lot of people who have been successful who made it not come through a struggle, not have to battle through um, uncertainty and have to really knuckle down and and work hard to see things come to fruition. So I suppose there is, when we've learned, there's so much value and that's why not many people make it. But also I often have this conversation with God about well, why is it so hard? Like, you know, because more people should make it, right? We were all born to do something great and we were all born with purpose. And so it's sad and it's difficult to see that many people haven't reached their purpose and they haven't been able to pursue the vision on their heart because it's been so difficult, perhaps financially, physically, whatever the challenges may be for everyone, um, because they're all different. But there is once you, and I know from personal experience, having come through so many different challenges in the last few years, that when I get to that place of, you know, achieving the things that I've strived for, I see the value of what it taught me and how it's prepared me to sustain that blessing, to sustain that thing on my life. 
And so I'm really grateful for the challenges before me. And I'm grateful that I'm even in my frustration, I can see some strategies, right? I can see things that I could do to help move some of the difficulties and obstacles in my way. Um, and I think it's just trusting that, right? You want to trust that you can also take ha or you have the courage to take a leap and to go forward and to move with those strategies, even when they seem uh, really scary. Um, but yeah, I think to, just remembering that if something is really clear on your heart and it's seeking you to achieve it, you will have a reward on the other side of, of that. And it's not until you jump off the cliff that you see what's on the other side, right? We can't mm. sit on this, um, on the edge and just wonder um, and, you know, ask other people what it's going to be like because for everyone's going to be experienced differently. So that's where I'm at. And I think I'm just really processing that it will take or it will seem really difficult. It will seem really challenging, but there is reward at the end and there's something that, will allow me to fulfill this desire, this insatiable desire of, I want to give to people. Like when that really chases you and when it like sits with you, it's, it's unbearable. And I think mm. often um, for people who have made it and who have been able to achieve incredible things, I think it's that insatiable desire to give and to serve others that has not allowed them to give up. It has... Yeah kept them in the game and kept them focused on what it is that they set out to achieve and to reach that goal with it at all costs. But it's certainly, man, it takes some grit and determination to get there. And it's, um, yeah, like you mentioned, it's, it's, it's a fight. You've got to constantly be, um, willing to take that risk, willing to go a little further, to do things a little bit differently, to not be in your comfort zone, but, uh, be really challenged how can I do this um, differently and not thinking about my own needs or my own comfort or my own uh, ideals? Sometimes you've got to, and I think oftentimes when you are truly serving others and when you're truly in purpose, um, it really removes the ego. It makes you shed off the ego. Like it just, it, that's the refinement, right? Because we needed to be able to serve others wholeheartedly. Otherwise, we'd be too concerned about money or we'd be too concerned about the self and the comfort. And I'm not going to, you know, speaking, you know, be engaged in speaking events or whatever, you know, day in, day out because it's just too much for me or I'm too precious for that. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can't serve and be comfortable. Um, so, yeah, there is certainly an exchange there to, to be done. Yeah, and, and it's interesting you, 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 you mentioned the the discomfort, like, you know, while you were sharing that, I was reminded of, uh, you know, Jesus and his, and the cross, right? It's like the whole time he, he knows that uh, he, you know, his way of life, he believes in it so much that he's willing to give it up. It's, 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 it's just mind boggling that, that is that is exactly like he's aware of it while doing it and he knows that it's gonna lead where it leads and it does indeed actually play out that way uh but he was aware the whole time that that is that that sort of like says a lot about the struggle because like when when we look at it from the outside um especially those moments when he's getting betrayed and when he has to kind of like go through that deep suffering. Um, we're so touched. We're like, wow, I, this is not something I would do. Right. But he's, he wasn't doing like those things were nothing considering him losing his belief, his faith. Right. It's like, if, if I have to lose my faith or my belief in what I believe in, nah, it's not worth it. So you can do whatever you want to me, but I'm not losing that. And I think we need a similar kind of commitment to our purposes. Like you have to believe it to the level of, uh, I don't know, this is something I could die for, right? This is... I. If if the world if this was not in the world it's not a place I want to be in. So, so looking at it from that perspective, you now are sort of like solving it 
from a different with a different drive because the the kinds of concerns you have are way deeper like if it was just a monetary concern uh and you're just trying to do something so you can make some money this there's, there's a ton of ways to make money I, I i joke about this with uh my friends i'm like look uh some of the people who've made the biggest amount of money who, that's not documented they have done it illegally you know they've sold drugs or something uh but they did get the money right it's not a clean way to do it uh it's not an it's not something probably i would be proud of doing that's why i don't do that um but for them that's that's what they wanted to do that's what they believed they needed to do so there's many options to to sort of like if you if you're looking for a way to generate financial income there's there's all these myriads of ways of doing it however we all have we all have a preference we all have a taste for what we want that to be it's like that is not how i want to make my money that's not how i want to find that resource i want to do i want to achieve that but only through this way it's like i i i don't mind uh achieving that but if it has to be on my terms it has to be through a way that's aligned with my values with my beliefs and if it's not then probably that's not the way and i think when we like we all have we all have that thing and that's why probably we we cultivate the skills we cultivate we we develop uh, ourselves in the ways we develop the professions we follow uh, it's all fitting into our values and our beliefs and then probably at at the end of it all like it when it all works out like when we achieve that end goal through the way that we chose to it's just amazing it's like we really feel fulfilled um however sometimes along the way we may have to like pivot or maybe reassess if we can achieve this and 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 i think that is all part of uh following your own resonance like how you feel about it does does it work does it align with your skills with your ambitions and with your mission at the time because as as we've spoken before like we are also always changing these experiences we go through on a daily basis they change us and they make us slightly different every day and that difference can compound at some point and then when you look back um i think it was jordan peterson who gave this example it's like many young girls you ask them when they are five uh and you know they'll tell you what you know you ask them what's your dreams like oh i just want to grow up and have such a, a big wedding and start a family right uh because that's what they've seen and then uh they hold on to this dream and then when they're like maybe towards their 30s they're still trying to achieve their five year old dream but they don't factor in it's like that is all a 5 year old could dream it's like the 5 year old and maybe the 20 year old and maybe the 30 year old they need to update that dream and uh, and make it fit for the person they are they have become and adjust it if they don't they, there's going to be a problem it's like is that disconnect that you know why am i doing what i'm doing right so if they could do it at 5 they wouldn't have that question but if if they are achieve if they're trying to achieve that you know several decades later and they've held on to it for life but then it doesn't make sense at the at the time when they've become it's going to be a problem right like even with with uh things like athletics i keep going to that example i don't know why but you find that there's only you have a peak you know peak age to do that and then you're going to reach a certain age and you're not going to be able to do that anymore your body gives up it's not able to do that and you have to respect that but if you don't then you you may push your body beyond its limits and then you have to suffer those consequences um so i think there's a need for that kind of alignment and um the other thing that comes up when i think about the alignment is the flow right it's like you have to you really have to resonate with your flow you have to know 
those things that fit with your spirit and how it resonates with them and how it works with them and if you can find that or and and if you find it you still have to do the work of you know staying with it and fine tuning and maintaining that um because it essentially is the you'd say the right spot to be at in the pursuit of whatever you need to pursue um yeah because the moment you go off then everything falls out of alignment and mm-hmm. if things fall out of alignment you will probably not be, have the courage and the strength to be able to realign them without suffering some major consequences yeah that is so good because you spoke about some really key things as we journey through and see our vision realized or even just beginning, but knowing that along the way we can pivot, that was a really neat word because pivoting is important to transcending, right? We need to be able to pivot and not know or not perceive that everything's going to happen in every season the same way. Like we need to be able to grow and that leads us to transcendence. That leads us to a high level of thinking and a better way of being because each season will require something different there'll be a new challenge before us and also our demographic is changing you know as one expands or the uh, exposure that you have you know goes further um, then you need to be able to pivot you need to be able to review what's working and what's not and constantly ask yourself where it is that your energy should go to and as you do that you begin to see that you know, you become clear or more clear as you go that, you know, you're always going to hold on to the values and beliefs you have. No one's going to take those away from you. Um, but as you share that mission, as you pursue the mission on your heart and the vision that you have, that doesn't change. It's just how you put it out there change, how you communicate to other people changes, how you serve people changes. And so, um, yeah, I think it's really important not to be afraid of that pivot or that review, a constant looking back. It's like when you have done a recording and you look back on the recording and you think, how could I make that better? What are the things that I could improve on? What are the aspects of the visual that or the audio that I can improve on? What are the tools that I might need to do this a little better or more efficiently? How can I automate it, right? And the whole aim is that you want to make it obviously sustainable, but you want to make it better you want to be able to serve more people and to be able to speak to more people and to help more people right release more people into their destiny and so pivoting i think is really vital to when when you start that journey to to know that it's okay to change your mind it's okay to change the uh, trajectory of your business or if it's your career right it's okay to ask well how else can i pull myself out there in terms of sharing my vision and my skills and my uh, calling um and i think it's important to always review if i've started with this one thing like a podcast is it working for me or you know do i need to be writing a book or whatever it is but just being open to the possibilities that can show up and lead you into evolving not only yourself, but evolving what this calling looks like on your life. And um, it is so tough initially to take that step. It's so tough to take risk after risk and not know if it's going to pay off. And then you have to, you know, we see a lot of the greats that have to deal with disappointment. You have to deal with disappointment. You also know, you also need to know how to leave disappointment behind, right? You're going to have discouragement you're going to have all these things that will let you down like friends family people that don't believe in you and you have just got to be your greatest cheerleader and i think that's what i'm learning too is just to be my cheerleader to be Mm. conscious of where i've come to how much i have grown and stay confidently in who i am today rather than who i was yesterday and what it is that i did you know years prior but just being proud of who i am and i think as we begin i i think that when it comes to evolving and really seeking your purpose and your destiny start with yourself really ask yourself of where am i at what were the struggles what are the things that i value and believe in um and really know those well and from that you always have this sense of direction as to what and how you're going to show up in the world because Mm -hmm. if i know my values and my beliefs then i know what i stand for and i know what i will not tolerate um, and so I gained the confidence to then speak up to that and to say, no, 
that's not going to work for me. Um, to gain the confidence to know the things that I need to say yes to and the things that I need to say no to. Um, and just staying focused on that trajectory, I think is really key. Yeah, it is very key. And, you know, the that famous, you know, quote about knowing thyself uh, is very, really key. Uh, however, it's like also yourself is, um, is an ever, you'd say, unfolding mystery, you know, to use like, you know, play on the language that Alifia uses. Um, <clears throat> you, you have to discover that self. It's like, yeah you would want to know you, you i i think the way i i think of it is more like you need to know a good percentage of yourself because it's always changing and things around you are changing it so maybe try to be very certain of like maybe the 60 percent of yourself so that you know at least this 60 percent is i i that i have to fight for is it's the self that i want to maintain and keep carrying forward as you know as i grow and develop of course you need you have the the room for the the pivoting and all the adjustments that need to happen along the way however um uh, you also need to know the self that that you're carrying about um because if you don't know that self then you're not going to know what doesn't fit with it you're not going to and if you don't know that you end up in in situations that you don't need to be in it's like you, you, that that question about how did i end up in this situation why am i doing this like you that usually comes from uh maybe making a choice that you are not very confident about that wasn't aligned with what you fully believe uh for whatever reasons and and I'm not saying like I don't do that. Like we we all do this, but but you end up in that scenario whereby you ask yourself, how did I end up here? But I think what you mentioned earlier of uh, they, looking back on that feedback, like reviewing, it's like how could I do better? It's like what is the mistake that I made that ended me up in a situation where um, I did not agree with where I ended up? Right? It's like how how do how do I not take those steps again? How do I see it uh, far off before it happens? And and I think once you've once you've developed that way for yourself, right? Then it's worth sharing for. It, it is it is something you you have to celebrate because that is your source of confidence. It's it's what makes what takes you to those milestones and and every with every milestone you need to reinforce that and and appreciate it so that it will give you the courage to continue it's like the courage comes from the confidence but the confidence comes from uh celebrating the progress and the milestones so we have we have to do that a lot and and that that requires to sort of sometimes really prioritize yourself like really take care because like we, we, you mentioned earlier before that uh we we especially when we're doing something that we want to give to others we have to always like really have them in mind it's like how am i serving how am i how is what i'm doing going to serve however i also think that one of the people in whom you're serving is yourself so i think you should be the main representative of of all the people you're serving because if it's uh, if it's something you're consuming or if it's something you can partake of then definitely there will be others who may want to partake in it um and like you know just to add to that like for example like having these conversations that are that are that have been that I've started having it's great like for me, I learn a lot through these kinds of conversations, and I, one of the reasons I do this is because I'm just seeking to learn from you know other people. Uh, like when you look at podcast land, there, there's all there's different ways to do it, right? Like uh, I've seen a lot of people who, you know, they they talk to something, and that's great. Like I I don't have the courage to do that. Like to sit down and and just you know, riff off uh, a subject on my own, it's too, 
it's it's way out of my comfort zone it's it's way too challenging however i do like if i'm conversing with someone you know like it's like it's great like all the things that you know are coming up that we we're talking about the great the, the great things that i i can contribute to i can learn from and um i always learn new things like in these conversations and because because of that because i i want to go and learn so for me this is uh like a moment of exploration where i'm probably going to learn some new things and at the very least you know like like you, we've always done this and probably we've only just started recording it of late but the goal is to learn and so at the end of the day if if i'm learning from this maybe there's other people who may learn from it maybe not but I, and sometimes i go back and watch them myself and like when i'm doing an edit and i i learn new things that i missed for when i was in the conversation so for me it's hugely important that this happens so it's great it's great to to be able to have people to do it with um yeah yeah and i really appreciate uh you mentioned a few really cool things there that um when it comes to serving others we serve ourselves best right um or we serve ourselves first so i i really resonate with that because another thing that i know and i've read and um truly believe is that the struggles we have have enabled us to pursue certain strategies and resolutions that we can share with others and so it's not from a place of just serving others but you've served yourself first and knowing yourself and knowing that you came out through that difficulty then you can see others coming out of that difficulty and our voice doesn't speak to everyone, right? We're going to have our unique audience that we're going to attract and speak to because we're all so unique and people have a multitude of different needs and each person was designed to bring a solution into a space that is different, right? And our gifting is for us. It's without repentance and it's not going to be taken away. And we all give it differently, because it's we all learn and, and acquire and uh, are receptive in different ways, right? And so I just want to honor that that it is about serve yourself and and know yourself and and know what it is that you had to struggle through and the things you've learned and bring that out of this authentic um, desire to help others because you've experienced that pain and that tragedy or that difficulty yourself. And when you can do that. What you're offering is something really integral, right? Your integrity is all over that because it's come from a place of, I know what it's like. I'm not producing a product that's counterfeit. I'm actually giving you my solutions that I've walked through and I've wrestled with. And so they're birthed out of this authenticity uh, that's happened in my life. And I think that's really key. And I love that we get to share with the world and even to the point of monetizing some of the things that we struggled with, right? Like you get to design a product, right? Let's say we're designing pens or whatever, but it's serving someone that that needed that, that couldn't come up with that creativity. And so we get to, when it comes to our calling, serve people and give of what we have and the things that might seem really simple and easy for us, but to other people, they haven't found the answer. And so they are just able to receive and to glean from us. And I think that's such a gift. It's a gift to us. It's a gift to them. Um, and our calling is really something special to really cultivate and to know that it's okay to show up differently. It's okay to be fully yourself. And we talked a little bit about how important it is to know yourself, to know who you are, because you're going to come up against. And I was even thinking, um, you know, the other day there was something that happened and there was a bit of like um, thoughts back to my past, right, and who I used to be and the things that happened. And, and there was this like, you know, tendency almost like within myself, the sensory sensation of wanting to pull back, right, and to hide. Because when we recall our past or when we go back to a memory that didn't serve us, we can sometimes go, oh, like, who do I think I am? You know, after you do all this work and you come to a new place and it's foreign to you, um, sometimes those those old thoughts will try and pull you back and say, no, 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 that's not who you are. 
you know, come back to who you were because it's so familiar. And so as we know ourselves and appreciate and honour the work we've done, we're able to then really stand in that place of newness and how we, you know, transcending, honour that transcendence and allow it to evolve beyond our wildest imagination. And that's how we're able to give more fully of ourselves because that transcendence and as we seek authentically to grow ourselves, that will get rid of things that get in the way. And our obstacles often are, you know, ego. Our ego gets in the way and it's about me and I can't lose this and I can't take that risk and what are people going to think? And it's all so much of our ego that gets in the way of us pursuing the things that are really on our heart and that we're purpose to do. And so yeah. getting past that and seeing, oh, I, I can just stand in this place. I don't need to be justified by anyone else because I know the work I've done. I know and I was present with the struggles and the difficulties and I was present with the um, work that I undertook to see myself over the other side. And so I'm constantly reminding myself, no, 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 you deserve to be here and to move forward from here. Yes, certainly completely agree with that, which uh, also reminds me of where we started with this, you know, allowing, right? Like you have to allow or yourself to actually experience this and actually, um, you know, manifest your way, right? It's, 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 and we, we get, you know, hesitant about that. We, we get a bit neurotic about it because we, 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 we get stuck, you know, we think about, you know, what you're talking about there, our ego is like, oh, me, 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 what am I going to look like? What is it going to sound like? What will happen to me? Um, but I think you touched on it again. We have to think about it from the gift, right? Like, you know, how are you giving that gift, right? And it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It doesn't need to be perfect. It's just a gift that has to be given, right? And how? And the more the more you give it, the more you learn how to, right? The more you, the, the more you try to give the gift, the more you learn how to actually give that same gift. And so it's in the process of, of the doing, of the overcoming, of the participating. So that is great. Like it's, and also touching a little bit on, on, on the gifts, like if you ever give somebody, uh, like let's say host someone at your home, and you make a meal for them, and you invite them to eat. Um, they, you know, like even in the olden days, like you know, the kings had food testers, right? It's like, uh, no, we need somebody to test it to make sure there's nothing evil in it, right? It's like if you can't eat your own food, I don't know who's gonna be wanting to eat it because uh, there's that that other saying about um, charity starts at home. It's like yeah, it's like if you before. <laughs> If you're going to be charitable, then you you should be one of the the clients of this charity. So yes, we should be able to consume of those same gifts that we want to give. We should be able to partake of them. And I think all these uh, guidelines, or all, all you'd say, uh, pointers to um, overcoming some of the struggle, right? Because in some cases. Uh, you you you're probably trying to give a gift that you cannot consume, or you you're being motivated for different reasons. It's like, oh, I would never do that, uh, but I want people to do that, and it's like, seriously, <laughs> there's definitely going to be a lot of struggle there, yeah. Uh, but if it's something uh, that you want to do, so if, if it's you know. Think about these, uh, let's say, nutritionists, right? They're pitching you a certain diet to try and eat, but they don't, they haven't tried it. That's a problem because <laughs> why would I? I need to see that you believe in your product. You believe in in what, you, what you're using. I'm reminded of that movie about, uh, what is it? Um, Joy, I think it's called Joy, the lady who invented this mop. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and and she really wanted a good mop, right? Like she really worked on it in her spare time, and and wanted to have a tool that she can really use efficiently a certain way at home. And it had to meet all these goals. Like 
the problem she was solving for was a real problem that she was living with and she needed this product. And it's only after she invented it and used it for a little bit that, you know, they decided, you know, she decided, look, I think maybe other people could benefit from this because it's saved me so much time or it's, it's been, it's so convenient for me in such a way. I look at all the suffering it has saved me. And now I think maybe it could, there may be other people who don't know about this. And if they try it, it's going to help them. And so I think in a similar way, uh, we need to use that same approach. And I think when we approach it that way, it sort of lines up with who we are, what we want, uh, the purpose, the belief, the values, and the abilities. Like it, it, it's in the, it's the right problem set for us. And when we're working on that, we're making the progress uh, the way we should. And it's, it's reinforcing and we're, we're hitting those milestones and, and we feel the progress. And, and so I think some of that like, is part of a, a, a signal of, yeah, this is where I need to keep going. Yeah. That's so good. I love that because you spoke about how, you know, we try our own food first and I think it's so important. And uh, even as you're putting your vision out there, you want to try your own food because you want to be proud of what you put out there. And you, um, I think that's the, and I also see this um, as a bit of a measure to contrast between those who are authentic in their giving and serving of others and those who are not, because if I'm not willing to try my own product, then I'm really just there for a quick cash or some, you know, popularity gain or whatever it is that I am trying to get. Um, and so we see that, you know, contrast in those who will really put themselves through the rigor and who really believe in their product. They don't need to oversell it. They don't need to put fear into people or use the scarcity mentality, you know, like this is the last one. You better jump on quickly or, you know, time's running out. If you don't pay this much money now, you're not going to be part of whatever it is. Um, I think there's a difference when you really truly um, can experience someone who's in their authentic giving uh, of their gifting, you know, operating in their authentic gifting and, and from a heart of um, integrity. Um, and I really love that. And I think when we, it, it sort of makes me appreciate the struggle even more because if I can struggle through it, knowing I'm going to serve those people, it's almost like a boost of energy for me to go, yeah. I need to go through the struggle. It's worth it. I have to serve those people no matter what happens. I have to get through this obstacle. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to do it, um, you know, if it's the last thing I do. But I think our purpose and our calling, you know, they really do live on the inside of us. And I hear people all the time express how they have this regret, right? People will talk about regret, especially at the end of their life. And as a nurse, I've experienced this so many times. Uh, and people will often say, if only I had done this, or if only I had, to, you know, whatever, um, I don't want to live with that regret. And I think on the inside of all of us, there is that regret that's, you know, like a little whisper all the time sort of nugging at us. Otherwise, we wouldn't have shame around the way we lived our life. We wouldn't have regret the way on the way we lived our life. Um, you know, we wouldn't have behaviors that have led us to compensate for not achieving nothing right people have certain destructive behaviors that help them to cope with shutting down that voice and and moving away from what it is that they were purposed to do and and so they you know make excuses it's like oh it's okay i just you know it wasn't my fault it was so and so and eventually all of that really truly comes back to you and haunts you and people know that uh, no matter how much you deny in front of other people and you might be able to hide it and mask it. Every one of us has been called to something great and that calling lives within us until the day we die because, again, the gifting is with our repentance. And so I think I want to encourage people to live to their authentic self and calling, to really seek that out, to really dig deep and find out their true uh, value. What do you value and believe in? And then practice within that and see the magic that happens. It's not going to be straightforward and often there are obstacles that you need to overcome, but remind yourself of the value of overcoming those obstacles and the place where it leads you 
And often that's where we want to be, right? So envision yourself, envision that future, envision the five years, the 10 years that it might take. Where do I want to be? Because whether you like it or not, as long as you live on this earth, you're still going to end up somewhere. So take control of where you end up. Take take stock of where you want to end up, right? Take stock of the years that have been and maybe you haven't been in places where you want it to be and, you know, you're, you're frustrated and, and whatever. That is part of the choices you made. And so you're the only one in control and you can really shift gears to uh, propel you into the future that you want to see manifest. And I think we can all be encouraged to know that each one of us can achieve it. And yes, there's going to be challenges that refine us, that, you know, bring us all the challenges, I believe, will or are there and formed to really help us be the best version of ourselves. They're not a hindrance. They, I think, a um, a bit of a, like a step up, I suppose. You know, when you go through a refinement period, I've never regretted being refined personally because I've always come out being a better version of me. And I've really appreciated that because as I began to do the work and look within me, the freedom that I experience, the freedom from thoughts that held me captive, the freedom from uh, even within my, my body, just this freedom that I'm experiencing to truly appreciate who I am, how I'm showing up. I think in every struggle, there's something we gain that if we allow ourselves to go through it, we really can appreciate it. And with our calling and our gifting and our potential, there is, there's a weight on that. And so that weight needs to be sustained long-term. We were not designed to just reach our potential and then die. We were designed to enjoy what it is that the fruit of our labor will bring back. And so I truly believe, and I've seen it in my own life over and over again, and with so many successful people that once you get to where you want to be and you've you know done the work and you've gone through all the challenges, you're then able to sustain that blessing. But if mm-hmm. I don't go through challenges, if I take shortcuts and we see with, you know, people who win a million dollars or whatever, how many millions they win, right? They go to a lottery and they win all this money. They're not able to sustain that. They're not able to utilize that in a way that is lucrative and that is prospering and b- brings blessings to themselves and others because I don't know how to sustain this money. I don't know how to handle this. I don't know what the ways are that I can invest this and make it grow, right? Because I haven't had to struggle for it. I don't even have an appreciation for it and hold no value towards what it can bring to uh, improve my life. I just know that in the meantime, I can see all the things that I can buy, all the additions to my life that it can bring. Um, But if we value something, we don't treat it so carelessly. And that's the big difference. And so allow yourself to go through the challenges and and ask yourself, what is it that I'm gaining right now? What are the things that are shifting within me that are allowing me to even more um, embrace the future that's ahead of me and to sustain that to its end? Wow. Thank you so much, Juana. I would not add anything more to that. You've really summarized it so beautifully. And I am so appreciative of you joining me today and having this chat and i look forward to the next one thank you very much thank you so much